Okay, getting back on this, we're getting close here. As you can see, I went ahead and painted his shirt and his vest and his hat back here and his cigarette, which I'm going to take out. And his glasses, I sprayed them with some uh, dull coat. This is dull coat, I use it a lot. Alright, I did his, uh, take his hat off here, get off. I did his Marshall badge. People ask me how do I letter, well, I used to do it by a brush, and well I still do it by the brush. But I'm always looking for a better way to do it. So I went down to Hobby Lobby and I brought me some of these calligraphy pencils. Now these have uh, water-based ink in them, so you have to remember that when you're uh, putting a varnish finish on it. Anyway, they come very fine. This is a real fine one. I brought several different sizes. But, uh, Judy's having a problem back there. But anyway, they draw thick one way, like that, and then they draw thinner the other way. So you can do some pretty nice stuff with them. And after you put put it on, after you do what you're doing, get your dog coat and just just give it a real light little spritz <laughs> and then dry it. Give it another one and then dry it. And put it, a third one should do it. third one's going to anchor those colors. So when you come back and at the very end and give your figure, you know, your uh, coating of uh, polyurethane, satin finish, not blow, not depth, because depth is a lacquer and it will just eat right through that paint and you'll have a great big mess on your hand. And blow, well, you know my feelings about that junk. So anyway, that's how you use those pins. Okay, what else? Uh, oh, all right, on the back here, I like to make silk backs to my vests. I use, uh, that's just, uh, where is it here? Forest Green. Where the hell did you go? Can't find it. Well, anyway, let's just take this as forest green. I use this and this. This is uh, interference green, they call it. It's just a pearlescent paint. You can see it here, maybe. But it's green-based, and you mix these two together, and uh, you can come up with a nice silk color. I also have a... This one is rich copper. It's also uh, a pearlescent, as you can see there. I use it with red. Mix a little red or brown or whatever, and it gives you a real nice, uh, or even a blue will give you a real nice uh, silk, silk color. Okay. So, this is kind of flat, you know. I'm always badge kind of breaks up the flatness a little bit. We're going to put some stripes on the vest to uh, make it look even better. And to do that, I'm going to use a, a liner brush. Okay? Real thin. And I'm going to use some silver paint. And the beauty of these 
these liners is they let you uh, draw a nice even straight line. If you hold your hand steady. And we like nice even straight lines. As you're drawing these lines, always keep an eye on the side edges of your piece so you know you're going to end up square because it's going to look awful funny if you don't. But see that really, uh, really busts up that dullness of the, of the piece. These big large areas of one color. You know, don't that look nice? And the liners also hold quite a bit of paint. But you want to thin it down. See how that breaks it up? And then on this uh, lapels, you don't want it straight up and down there, you want it at an angle. Let your brush follow the contours of your carver. And that way it'll look realistic. See there, look at the difference from that side to that side now. Nice, huh? And then just come back and kind of touch up these little areas. As you're going around, you want your brush to end up the back, straight up and down like that. So you're just going to have to kind of, you know, take that into consideration and remember that. Or again, you're going to end up with something that just doesn't look correct. Like that. See that? That's good. I like that. So enough of that, okay? Do the rest later. But you can see, see the total difference from that over there to this over here? I mean, it just looks so much better. All right. Okay, now get back to this guy here. Now, we painted his uh, hair that dark gray, and I said I ran out of it. Well, I mixed me up some more. I had, I had some uh, just sort of light gray here, and... Uh, I took some black and squeezed in there and came up, came up with the color that I was using before, dark gray. So uh, you could probably go to this store and find you some dark gray, but you can also make sure. Huh? So anyway, on his hair, we're not finished with it yet. Let me brush here. I squeeze me out a little dollop of white. And we're just going to brush on some highlights. You just want to catch the 
ridges of the carving marks. I've seen uh, some really good carvings messed up by the carver getting a little carried away with his dry brush. Oop, never want to stick it in the water, that's for sure. Okay, now we want to get some up here on top. Gotta be real careful here. Still catching a lot of flack on my liver spots. Okay, now for the eyes. Let me do this without being done. Okay, for the eyes. Get some black here. Some of that white there. We're going to put it right there where the pupil's going to go. So you can see how the how the color you got the white on the top here where the pupil is, and then it kind of fades out, and you get that little red corners. So that, that gives that eye a rounded appearance rather than just looking like some doll eye that most of, most people have a tendency to paint, which I don't care for. All right, got my thing dipped in there. Now we're going to just establish. where he's looking. That's pretty good. I'm just using my toothpick. I gradually make 
these a little larger. about the size I want. I can't get down into that deep corner. So I'm gonna have to use my brush. Effect is it? Hmm? <coughs> Ooh, I like that. I don't like those great big pupils. Now, when we put a get everything finished and varnished, and we put a little spot of epoxy on those the black spots, he's just going to sparkle and just come to life immediately. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint the other side of his vest and then I'm going to varnish him with uh, a coat of uh, polyurethane, satin finish, not blow, not depth, and uh, hmm? peanut gallery's acting up back there again. Now let's see what else. Uh, someone asked me some questions. How much time we got? Yep, 17 minutes. Uh, Oh, the Sandiflex wheel. Merit Abrasives is the company. They're in Oregon. Just look them up on Google. Just Merit, M-E-R-I-T, Abrasives. They make the Sandiflex wheels. I use the uh, finest insert, fingered inserts. I think they're 320, 360, something like that. Anyway, they're the finest slashed inserts. And uh, as far as the motor goes, uh, most one of mine is, uh, well I think both of mine, are mounted on old appliance motors which run at 1725. I've even got a 1725 that runs my bandsaw. 1725 runs my little buffing wheels. That's just sort of a standard motor speed. So, uh, you know, you can find a motor like that and you know it's got the correct size shaft on it and you just slide that uh, Sandiflex wheel on there and you're on your way to getting a good result. So anyway I'm going to go ahead and varnish this thing and in the next video we'll wrap it all up and this project will be done. So until next time I'll talk to you later.